Is it important to you to feel a part of something? Why? Isn't it important to everyone? Help me to understand, Sven. <sighs> Did you feel pressured? No. The police think they used you. They needed me. My whole life I've never fit in. Do you know what that feels like? To be a stranger everywhere? Yeah, my parents tried to keep me safe from it, but got me anyway. It was stupid of me to think I had a future. Well, I understand. I feel that way too sometimes. What are you talking about? You're alive. Want to add to your collection, Miss Frankenstein? <laughs> How many have there been before me? Trust me, you're the first. I'm honoured. Really, though, um, thank you. This has given me more time to remember. God, it's really... It's good to see you. What's up? Wow. Amazing room you got here. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you've done this. Uh, your sister said not to mention about going outside. Are you not feeling well? Uh, come on, let's go for a walk. I'm making you nervous. Is it because I mentioned about going outside? Do you even want me to be here? Wow. Okay. Uh, this is a mistake. The avocado price rise was last week's protest. Well, she would have known that if she bothered to turn up. Guys, all right. It was raining last week, all right? So you mean to tell me that you don't know what we're protesting about right now? Is it equal pay for male models? Fund the Pale, Male and Stale support group now. Pale, Male and Stale? Yes. Equal rights for aging, middle-class white men. Oh. That's such a really good idea. Yeah, they go to classes and learn about gender pronouns, and then they go to history lessons to learn about how they fucked it for the rest of us. Yeah, all right. I get it now, OK, Erica? No need to be so salty, Pearl Milkwell. Salty? This isn't salty. This is actually raw dedication to the cause, something you would know nothing about, Erica Campova. OK, look, Pearl, all we're asking you to do is just take this a bit more seriously. Oh, actually, I've got to get home off a little early, I'm afraid. You can't just pick up and leave. We've literally just got started. All right, look, I've got bigger issues to be getting on with. Bigger than world issues. I've got to put some finishing touches to my super exclusive birthday party tonight. Most people think about information online as sticking around forever, but maybe that's not strictly true. Just like physical memorials don't last forever, digital memorials might not either. And the choices you make online now can affect how you're remembered and who remembers you for a very long time. I'm Elaine Casket. I'm a psychologist and I've been studying death and the digital for about 12 years. 
I've even written a book about it, All the Ghosts in the Machine. At the moment, every country in the world is in a state of flux with respect to how we think about digital remains. Should they be the same as physical possessions, the sort of things that you can pass on in a will? Or can we not even think about these things as possessions at all, when they might not belong to us in the first place, but to the corporations who control our information, both when we're alive and when we're dead? When you think about the data of the dead online, you might think about the headlines, dead people on Facebook. But most of the time, you don't even know it when you're encountering a ghost online. Think about the last book you bought on Amazon, or the last hotel you booked because of a review on TripAdvisor. That book and that hotel might have been recommended to you by a person who's no longer alive. Hi, I'm Hannah Sweeney and I'm here today with Susan Kennard and we're at her Harley Street practice. Hi Susan. Hi Hannah. So what is your healing practice? I'm kind of known as the spiritual scientist and the reason for that is I incorporate my scientific background which is psychology and psychotherapy. So you are a qualified psychologist? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. and I trained at the Tavistock Centre which is the centre for psychotherapy. Yeah. So I'm very much that traditional base but I'm also a medium, somebody who works with energy and an holistic practitioner. So I'm known as a spiritual scientist because I like the evidence. And what can I expect to happen today? It really depends on when we start doing the session. It depends on what I'm really given as an aspect to work with. So it might be that I use some of my processes that I've created because they help us access the inner child part of us that holds that message. And when I work with people, it's always about helping them clear their energy field. So people come to me, for example, where they want to shift something. So it might be to do with success, or it could be to do with childhood trauma, or it could be that they just want to move something in their life. 